Yeah, I think so. Oh, hi. hi. Good. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dr. Chalam and Marina again, and uh, we are on our fifth podcast. Fifth or fourth? Fifth. I have no idea. <laughs> it's actually the fifth podcast. All right. Cool. So today we decided, um, you know, um, to address one of the common questions that people bring to our practice, and we're going to go over that, and I think you have seen it already. We're going to really address fatigue, is it normal or is it a part of a disease process or can it be, is it always a part of a disease process or can it even be a normal um, condition. And a, a lot of times uh, fatigue is something people have to understand what fatigue actually is and how is it defined. And like we always say at Holistic and Integrative Center of Novi, the best place for you to find your best doctor and the only way to do that is through uh, being empowered through education. So let's start with what uh, fatigue really is. When you have and you really have to look at it as um, when it's normal, can it be normal? Yes, absolutely it can be normal. It is when you you know, you anticipate you're going to be fatigued because you've had a whole day of, um, of work that you have to be doing. So it's really, really, it's defined as prolonged, intense activity. And therefore it's predictable and it's also transient, which means you're gonna get over the fatigue. But the fatigue that really concerns people is when it is a persistent fatigue that occurs every day, and it doesn't matter whether you're sitting, whether you're working, whether you're laying down, you're constantly fatigued. That's the fatigue, I guess, that requires further investigation. But let's look at when does when does when do people even have normal fatigue? How can you get normal fatigue? There are three there are a few circumstances. I should not say just three, but usually when you have a very long day. How many of us work without having boundaries? <laughs> right. Twelve hour days. Twelve twelve hour days also. I mean, if you're doing three twelve hour days, it's fine, but. It's, it, there's, it's almost like hourless. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, we, people just go on for hours on end, and by the end of the work day, they don't realize that they've you actually put in 16, 17 hours of work, and you don't have time for anything else. That can be, if not physically exhausting, it's mentally exhausting. The other one is where you have constant physical activity. For me, I can relate to this now because we're in the process of moving, just packing, putting things away, at the same time making sure the rest of your life runs normally. Those kind of things can be, it's, it's a new form of physical activity. Your body is not really ready to do that much of work all at one time. That can cause fatigue. Having a child who is constantly running around. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. When you, um, yeah, when you're constantly like, so you're not, not only you're doing your work and then you go home and figure out a way to constantly keep them entertained. All we need to do is get their energy cells into ours. That's it. Yeah. That's simple. That's, That's actually the whole podcast is how do we harness how a child's energy? <laughs> a, a, a child's energy. Yes. How do you get that energy so you can actually feel, um, have the same amount of energy no matter what. The other one is, this is my most, um, I guess this is really one of the things that I find among teenagers. The reason they have fatigue is boredom. Constantly, they need, they are so used to being stimulated, whether it be social media or something. Uh, if there's a moment that they cannot be connected online, they're actually bored and boredom re leads to fatigue. So that's a very important one. And of course, sleep deprivation. If you're one of those that watches the nightly news, watches TV, or is constantly on Facebook, so your hours of sleep, instead of being seven or um, six or seven hours, is down to four hours, or you are um, deprived because you're drinking water close to bedtime and having to wake up a couple of times, you're on a water pill, therefore you have to get up and go to the bathroom a couple of times, or you simply just go to bed worrying about things. It's very difficult to stay asleep uh, and have a deep um, restful sleep. Now when you don't have a restful sleep and an interrupted sleep, 
with all of those conditions or even sometimes sleep apnea. Now sleep apnea comes under pathology, but physiologically it's usually how we um, think, what we think about, that's what causes it. So sleep deprivation is very common and I'm going to see if anybody has joined us because I, I guess we have figured out a way to look at real-time comments. So getting to when does it become a pathological event that you do need to do further work? What do I do and how do I know if this is not a great um, um, or this is something that I need to be concerned about? So a couple of things that um, do it most of the times. When fatigue is accompanied by weight loss, that's probably uh, an ominous sign. A lot of times fatigue with rapid weight loss can be either depression, uh, severe depression, or even more ominous is cancer. But otherwise, fatigue is usually seen with other medical conditions. It coexists with other medical conditions. Really, when you look at fatigue, it's a kind of a vague symptom. Everybody will say, you know, people say different things as fatigue. Um, sometimes you may come to the doctor and say, I'm so fatigued, but are you fatigued or are you not sleeping well at night? I guess that we have to differentiate between that. Yeah, I mean, there's that, and then a lot of times, I think on the other spectrum, is people don't realize that fatigue is a problem, or yeah. that their lack of energy is not normal. Lack of energy is never normal. I mean, if you're waking up with lack of energy, that's not normal. We're talking about normal fatigue is the one that comes because it is predictable. You know you're going to be, you have done something to make yourself tired. But if you just really wake up and have fatigue, you have something, something that absolutely needs to be investigated further. So the lack of energy or even feeling weak, but you don't have a medical diagnosis, that needs to be investigated further. So let's look at how does it uh, impact your life. If you really look at it, fatigue impacts every aspect of your life. Not only are you able, not able to do the things that you love to do, you cannot travel, you don't want to go out anywhere because you know you're going to feel too tired. If you cannot do the things that you normally need to do in order to keep your life in order. Whether it be doing your laundry or even cooking a meal, it cannot happen if you're extremely fatigued all the time. Yeah, you spend time with their family. I've had so many people who they just come home from work and they go to bed. Go to bed, and I know. Bed. And in fact, they sit in the sofa and have the remote control. They're watching something and they don't even know that they're watching. They've already dozed off. Now, when fatigue is greater than six months, we have what is called, we, it may fall under the category of chronic fatigue syndrome, but remember the word syndrome comes with other symptoms. In this instant, normally it has to be fatigue along with like lymph node swelling, muscle pain, joint pain, when there's no swelling of the joints, but there seems to be a joint pain. So you actually have to look for a pattern, and usually your medical doctor can determine if this is chronic fatigue syndrome or is it a fatigue from an underlying medical condition. Now, when you really look at um, broad categories, who, who are the people who experience fatigue? People who have cancers, mm -hmm. people who have kidney disease, people who have liver disease, neurological disease, particularly Parkinson's, uh, multiple sclerosis, very, very common uh, symptom is fatigue. Then, of course, lung disorders. I have a few things, if, um, and of course, our, our big topic, which is a big topic in our practice, thyroid disorders. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> Absolutely, it causes. Now, but there are more other endocrine conditions. People will think of, oh, does adrenal fatigue play into this? And then there are others who would uh, wonder if um, it's just thyroid, uh, could it be uh, diabetes? Actually, insulin resistance, the fluctuations of sugar, causes tremendous amount of fatigue because the job of the body is to keep your sugar levels on an even keel in the blood. And when you're all over the place, you've got these moments of feasting and then fasting, or you're overworking your insulin uh, by eating a lot of refined sugar and foods, your insulin spikes up then goes really down, so your sugar spikes up, goes down. It's a lot of work for the body, really associated with fatigue. 
But the inflammatory states, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune conditions like lupus, uh, can also cause a lot of fatigue. Uh, neurological, I, I told you, 40% of multiple sclerosis patients do have fatigue. Parkinson's, almost 30% of them, mm -hmm. a little over 30% will have fatigue. Uh, stroke, traumatic, uh, brain injury, ALS also have a lot of times fatigue as a huge um, a component of their um, symptoms. Can you just go ahead and say that almost every disease has an underlying <laughs> fatigue? It does, but, to it. but I think that when the fatigue becomes overwhelming, there are some diseases that are more associated. Mm -hmm. I think endocrine and neurological diseases and autoimmune are pretty much. Yep. One of the things about fatigue where it becomes really ominous besides the depression and the cancer is cardiovascular. When you have fatigue, all of a sudden you're just tired and you have no idea why, but you don't have, you still have a great attitude. You got to look at the cardiovascular disease. You got to get that checked. Um, stress test is something that mm -hmm. I do recommend. Rule that out, uh, especially if all of your other blood tests come back normal. Because cardiovascular disease, unfortunately, can happen like suddenly, a sudden death. The 30% of people who die, um, we've not been able to change no matter how much advances we've made in cardiovascular uh, treatments. Obviously, they used to die even before um, with, st uh, with the advent of stents and cardiac bypass. All of that has gotten better. Um, trying to do preventive screens, educating people on blood, better blood sugar control has reduced cardiovascular disease. But there's a 30 percent uh, group that they just suddenly die. And so fatigue sometimes should be, and fatigue always should be taken seriously if you have no idea why you fatigue. If it is a persistent one, it is not transient, um, and you don't have an explanation as to why you're fatigued. Uh, the other one, the mental causes besides depression, is addiction. If you're one of those that drinks alcohol on a regular basis, um, or uses drugs, especially opiates, um, you will have constant fatigue. Uh, Ultram and uh, narcotics, I know there's this big uh, education about narcotics, but just taking these pain medicines can cause fatigue. Now, when it comes to the only other thing that I will say mentally besides boredom is the attitude. If you're angry about everything, you have this attitude where uh, everything in your life is somebody else's fault. I'm not even kidding you about this. Uh, we find this even amongst patients with cancer or any chronic illnesses where they're angry that they have this because they blame somebody else for it they tend to have a very um, symptomatic disease process. I cannot emphasize how much your mindset and your attitude is important for you to recover and actually get better. So um, I think pretty much giving you the causes of fatigue is like huge. Yep, <laughs> that gave you a lot of answers, right? Yeah, it, 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 actually, how do you, it, there's always something you can do about fatigue. But most important is you've got to get to the root cause of your specific reason for fatigue. Just trying to say, I'm taking adrenal supplements uh, to support my adrenals. Why does your adrenal need support? It does not need support if, if your adrenals actually supports you. So if you're trying to support it, you need to see why it needs support. That's, that's the other way we, we don't truly believe this true adrenal fatigue unless your adrenal glands have stopped working. Your adrenals, your thyroid, your insulin, they all respond to something that you are doing. So what you're doing has to change for them to actually um, get optimized. So it's not a matter of just doing, um, taking adrenal uh, fatigue or supplementation. But the other thing also to keep in mind besides what you are doing is, um, I cannot emphasize enough, your nutrition. Nutrition becomes very important because it is the food that gets converted to energy through these machines called mitochondria that is a part of every cell in our body, except maybe the red blood cells. So when foods, food enters a particular organ, the B vitamins are needed, magnesium is needed, zinc is needed for it to go through that, a lot of vitamins and minerals to go through that cycle of where 
it's broken down and energy from the glucose is extracted and converted into the currency for energy which is ATP. So ATP is like that big burst of energy that we need and this process goes on constantly in our bodies. So when you have a high stress time and you're using a lot of your glucose to convert into ADP, you're using a lot of the minerals, but you're not eating well because you're stressed. Mm -hmm. You're not sleeping well. You're depleting the supply for this process to happen. And I think that's where most of us don't realize when you're stressed, you need to supplement. In fact, you need to eat more nourishing meals you need to take supplements during that time to support the mitochondria. And if you guys need to know what kind of supplements you should take for your mitochondria, make sure you reach out to the office or shoot us an email and we'll send you a protocol that you have to follow to support the mitochondria during your stressful period. But instead, what do we do when we get stressed? We stop doing everything that we're supposed to support ourselves, right? We don't we eat well. Pizza. <laughs> yeah. We get pizza. We say, I can't, I'm moving. Therefore, I have to quickly order something. Plan. I cannot emphasize how much we have to plan. We know when you're doing something stressful. You're either you're uh, painting your house or you're moving somewhere or you're traveling plan ahead of time unless it's something completely unexpected like somebody died and you had to show up everything else requires planning get into the habit of waking up in the morning planning your day or if you think it's too much every day use a weekly calendar figure out how the day is going to be for every member of the family Whatever you put effort into, when you start putting that effort in, you'll find that things will go well. I see people who can handle a thousand things really well, and then there, there are others when one extra thing gets added to their only one thing that they're doing, they fall apart. It all comes down to how well planned you are, and how well nourished you are, how well rested you are. It's absolutely easy to beat fatigue. But when you have a disease process, can you actually take care of the fatigue? And the answer is yes. You've got to, got to, got to balance your nutrition. I cannot emphasize enough that, I don't know how many times we have seen a lot of our patients do overcome fatigue. And I can give you an elimination process, which I have written down in one of my little write-ups here. But um, really, the elimination process is remove all refined sugars, um, the white flour, refined flours. Um, some uh, wheat have actually can also be extremely. Um, I don't know if it is because of the glyphosate or because of the gluten. Yeah, there's so much. There's, yeah, there's so much that goes on with the wheat that we find removing wheat from your diet during times of stress or if you have a disease process, particularly an inflammatory disease process, removing some of these um, processes, or in fact, all of the processed foods have to be removed. Mm -hmm. Any, yeah, go ahead. No, it's just it's incredible, like within two weeks of getting that junk out, yeah. how much your body recovers very quickly from that. Absolutely. I mean, and I always, you know, people come and show me packaged stuff, they'll say, this really looks good, it has good ingredients, but it's packaged. When something has to be packaged, a label has to be put with calories, you're eating something processed. Something that's whole is always easy to do. So for instance, when you know you have a busy day, have a couple of apples or oranges or- Cut up uh, some vegetables. Yep, cut up some vegetables. And um, making hummus is so easy. Uh, these are all, if you join our community, Holistic Icon community, you have a lot of recipes out there. So just being prepared is probably the easiest thing to do in order to overcome fatigue um, the other things is let's say you have done you've actually rested you're drinking enough water you think you're eating well but you're still fatigued that's when testing becomes extremely important even if you have one of those conditions we spoke of whether it be parkinson's ms or um, rheumatoid conditions um, cardiovascular pulmonary First of all, make sure cardiovascular-wise you are healthy. That means stress test has been done. You're not going to keel over and die as we're trying to figure other things out. Make sure your uh, hormones have been checked. 
if those are all coming back normal, the next steps is we got to look at some deeper um, issues. We really order a lot of labs, and there are, there's a big list of labs, but in general, we got to look at the glutathione. We want to look at interleukin-6, so these are inflammatory markers, the tumor necrosis factor. The, then we're really looking for really bad stuff in the body. We're looking for cancers that are hidden that's just causing fatigue. Something you need to remember about symptoms in general. Symptoms come way before your blood test can reflect it. Similarly, your symptoms improve way before your blood test can reflect the improvement. So I just want you to understand when you have symptoms, a lot of times the basic tests don't show anything. I don't want you to just sit back and say, you know what, everything has come back normal. Mm -hmm. You gotta dig deeper and find it early enough. Otherwise what happens is by the time it shows up in the blood, it's probably a little too late. So extremely important um, to get testing done when you feel um, very poorly and both a lot of your basic tests have come back normal. Now, how do you um, approach fatigue in general? Always, always eliminate the root cause. Mm -hmm. Now, in case of uh, like um, MS and Parkinson's, obviously you cannot eliminate the root cause, but you can improve the function of the whole system. Remember, the body works as a system. It's not just the brain cells, but you improve the function by changing the nutrition. So work with someone who can optimize your nutritional uh, state or nutritional status. You may need some nutrients, like we said, the mitochondrial support is extremely important. And then drinking plenty of water because in a molecular level, 99% of our cells are water, so staying hydrated. The other one is exercise. Um, so when I'm fatigued, how can I exercise? You gotta do those first few things where you are having boundaries when it comes to work, you're actually sleeping, you're drinking enough water, and you're eating reasonably well, and introduce a little bit of exercise. You can just sit in a chair and use elastic bands. Some kind of exercise, resistance training, use your body weight, do push-ups or squats. Those are the things that you just have to start very small. It doesn't mean you gotta sign up with the gym and. Um, uh, sign up a trainer you could do that too if you really want to be motivated but stop somewhere the worst thing you can do for yourself when you have a problem is sit there and do nothing sit there and complain about it and do nothing beyond so you really want to shift you take action when there's a problem always take action it may be one step it may be just doing a few push-ups a day or it may be just drinking water or it may be just itemizing and seeing, hey, what am I really doing the whole day? Do a timeline and see how much time are you uh, on the um, internet? How much time are you bent over your phone trying to do texting or uh, Instagram or any of those things? How much time do you actually stay nourished? How many meals are you having? Are you eating too less? Some people just say, I'm not hungry, and they eat very little. That cycle, the vicious cycle goes. You need to feed your body the right nutrients so that the metabolic um, machine can actually be uh, stimulated. And then, of course, um, I cannot tell you enough management of stress. Uh, mindful meditation is very important. If you don't know how to do meditation, though meditation is not any um, big art and science, the first person who discovered meditation obviously did it on their own. And I'm sure you can find a way to remove your distractors. But stop doing some journaling. See what you um, you know uh, what you need to unload off from the day. Carrying that burden in your mind can fatigue you. So write down what is bothering you, and then you can discuss with somebody who's close to you. Come up with a solution. Every problem has a solution. It's just that you keep reiterating till you get that solution that actually works. Um, the other modalities is, of course, acupuncture helps. Um, it helps, but acupuncture never works alone. You have to do it with taking the nourishment on other lifestyle changes. And then um, uh, medications. Look at your list of medications. A lot of medications cause fatigue. 
um, diuretics, depletes you of magnesium. Magnesium is such a crucial part of our um, metabolic processes. So if you're on a diuretic, whether it be Lasix or hydrochlorothiazide, or you're on other medications that really deplete nutrients, you really need to get your nutrient levels checked or at least replace it with a good quality vitamin and supplementation. Again, I really emphasize good quality. You can get anything cheap, but you get what you pay for all the time. Really, uh, if you need some advice, that's something that we can guide you through. We like the company full scripts that's on our website. So go ahead and order um, some of the supplements. So here's what I would say, uh, supplements, if you feel like you're on a balanced diet, you are exercising, you're sleeping well, you're drinking water, it's just your stress levels are up and down. One of the things we do recommend is ginseng and of course vitamin D complex. I cannot emphasize enough about vitamin D. You have to have good quality vitamin D. Magnesium is another one that I would highly, highly recommend, making sure you take it as a supplement. Magnesium, there are different types of supplements. You have gluconate, glycinate, citrate, um, oxide, and oxide and citrate can actually cause diarrhea, so you want something that doesn't cause too many bowel movements, but actually supplies your uh, citric acid cycle. Um, other than that, um, I don't think I've missed much in the overall view, just to summarize. Fatigue can be normal or abnormal. Fatigue that's normal is very transient. It doesn't happen on a day-to-day -day basis. You know when you've increased your activity, that's when that happens. Abnormal fatigue is where it's associated with a disease or you have no idea why you're having fatigue but you just wake up being fatigued. And then you have um, the uh, associated medical conditions, particularly neurological as well as metabolic. Um, the common approach would be make sure uh, we can find a root cause, address the hormonal um, status of, of the person, make sure the cardiovascular is normal, and then we get into the uh, more fancy tests of trying to look for uh, cancers which are not really apparent. Um, and other than that, and then always, whenever you have a problem, you take action. You don't sit there and whine about the problem, but you look at what can I do next? What can I do for myself next? And then partner with somebody who can actually walk you through that pathway. It's not an easy task because um, we do, we look at the symptoms and get the most um, useful test and sometimes the tests may come back absolutely um, normal. So, uh, hi Joel, how are you? We finally seeing the comments. And um, do you think optimal weight is important for reducing fatigue? So, uh, that as far as the weight goes, I, there are three body types. Some people are a little on the heavier um, uh, side. What I usually recommend is to check inflammatory markers. If you have inflammation along with fatigue, a lot of the weight is actually inflammation. Those fat cells are inflamed. So uh, I don't know what optimal weight is, yes, but I do believe that you should look for the fat percentage. That's probably a better uh, indicator than a BMI. So if you are all muscle, um, then that's okay. But uh, for reducing fatigue, you gotta get to the root causes. What is causing your weight? That's something we have to look at, right? And but weight is another symptom too. It's another way to look at it. It's not just you know physical appearance or whatever, but there is a reason that there's extra weight. Yeah, and we look at it as um, the body holds on to resources because it feels that something bad is going to happen. Um, and then doesn't a rich uh, uh, diet rich in raw uh, vine ripened fruits and vegetables support all systems reduce risk of all disease? Uh, Absolutely, a uh, very um, plant-strong, wholesome diet has been shown over and over again to improve energy. But you also have to look at it as if your gut is so damaged. A lot of times people come to us with such damaged guts that even if they're eating healthy, first of all, they have bloating when they eat a lot of vegetables. And of course, I know um, since you work with Juice Plus, Juice Plus is a great option for people who don't cannot accumulate so much of the fruits and vegetables all in one sitting 
we do recommend that during juice plus or even powdered vegetables initially before they can um, handle all that fiber but we got to get the gut actually healthy before we just tell somebody you know go ahead and eat those three to four pounds of vegetables so it's it's a stepwise process how we would approach it but yes absolutely all of those are important but once you have like a degenerative disease like you know parkinson's or with ms then you really want to optimize the nutrition you got to look at the cause of why they have it and then of course you have to definitely remove cardiovascular and cancer as an issue now i also have to tell people it's true when you change your diet and become healthy you up you you are buying health but remember i said this before if you've spent 30 40 years uh, really not taking care of yourself you've earned that fatigue and you have to unearn it and just tweaking your diet little here and there doesn't do it you got to look at the whole system and there are layers that take us to a disease state we go to got to go through those layers and start peeling those layers out so that you can actually get to an optimized um, well wellness state uh, if that makes uh, any sense and the problem is a lot of times people go to doctors with fatigue as the only symptom and there's definitely something wrong but you keep kind of going through all these, well, I don't have, you know, there's no cancer, there's no other real overt disease, and yes. then they kind of get stuck with fatigue syndrome, and it's like, what does that really mean? And that's really where the nutrition is so important, because there's not really any other way to address it, especially if you can't even connect it to a disease, but you know that there's something wrong. Um, you know, even just a reactive hypoglycemia, like the insulin resistance plays such a huge role, and mm -hmm. you, most people don't really connect those things together. But there's that, there's um, food sensitivities could cause fatigue. So you really do have to look at the nutrition. Not only what you take out, but also what to put back in too. Right, the food sensitivities is a very important part. Um, a lot of people do have food sensitivities and they don't realize it. Uh, in fact, when we do a detox, we people come back and say, you know what, I uh, suddenly when I eat, like somebody I had today just came back and said, um, I don't know why I have all these, I didn't reintroduce the foods and it could be tomato, could be a reason for their reaction. So, and tomato to me is a very healthy and all of this data says it's a healthy um, fruit, but unfortunately some people react to it. So it's important to really go about it in a very systematic way if you want to resolve it forever. Uh, when you just when you have fatigue and you just say okay I'm going to do acupuncture then after you're done with acupuncture you go and do exercise then you say okay I'm going to eat the whole 30 mm -hmm. you know people are doing bits and pieces and never looking at this whole thing as a system you've got to go in a systematic manner like with everything you build a house you don't build the roof first you got to have the foundation and then you build it when you're rebuilding your health when you have a symptom you start with the root cause, make sure you've got a sturdy uh, understanding, a good understanding of why you have the problem, R uh, try to res get, remove the root cause and then build upon it. Uh, so if you ask me, yes, is this just nutrition? I don't think that's the only answer. Uh, I think it's the five pillars of health, your nutrition, your gut health, so the detox, your hormonal balances, your stress management, and of course the fitness of movement. Okay, anything else that I haven't addressed? Um, I think you're good. Anybody else have any more questions? We can like refresh that page real fast and see. We did mention too on our Instagram and our Facebook pages on Holistic Icons, the connection with vitamin B12 and fatigue is really strong too and also with depression because a lot of times you have fatigue and you actually get diagnosed with depression we have so many women come in and say I don't have depression I'm just really tired all the time. Yep. Um, so that's a big connection there, and even you can take tests. Hey Pam, <laughs> we just talked to you about this yesterday. Um, and you might not even be deficient according to Labrick, but you as an individual requires more of that nutrient. B12 is one of those where, depending on how you metabolize it and what form of that nutrient that you're getting, it might just not be able to be integrated into your system. And so, I mean, I don't know if you want to comment on B12. Yeah. 
so the uh, there's a so the, it, there was a study that was done where people had normal B12, uh, but they had this fatigue, um, and when they were given uh, injections of the hydroxycobalamin, uh, which is a better version than cyanocobalamin, which is what mm -hmm. most people give, there was a significant improvement in the fatigue. So sometimes your B12 levels might be fine on the surface and again I don't know if all of the labs we do are uh, really look uh, have a good view of what exactly the cells are doing in, internally but the B12 shots actually improve um, people's energy levels so I'm a big fan of giving the hydroxycobalamin when I look at their blood tests and if the symptoms are still there um, and is there a good multivitamin so uh, once again, Diane, what you have to understand, vitamins are water soluble and fat soluble. You don't get anything in one particular tablet. There are now recently, they have started com coming up in my most favorite um, uh, pharmacy since this is not sponsored by anybody. I don't get any kickbacks from anyone. It's pure encapsulations because they have very little fillers. But they do have a women's pack which I think has seven vitamins in that. So every morning you have to uh, take in that seven vitamins. But the best thing is to take um, your vitamin, um, the water soluble in one and the oil, um, fat soluble ones in another. So if you see vitamin D comes as a gel, omega-3 comes as a gel. These are all in the oil forms. So yes, there's no specific good multivitamin. It all depends on what you need. And uh, is it best to take the B12 in the morning? The answer to that is y you could, some people do better. I take my vitamins at night simply because it's easy, I'm going to sleep. Um, some of these vitamins have zinc in them. Zinc causes a little bit of a nausea. So I don't like to have that nauseous feeling in the morning. So I take it at night, um, just before bedtime, I take a handful of vitamins and it seems to work well for me. My levels actually when I do the blood test are pretty decent, um, but you know there are everybody is different. It depends on how you react to B12. Some people feel like significantly more energy immediately from it, and then that way you might want to take it in the morning. So usually, I think they do recommend taking it in the morning just because some people yeah. get that burst of energy and you don't want to be up at night if you're one of those people. But it's really you know whatever works for you. Um, just take it with food. Yeah, and I, I take mine actually on an empty stomach because I think it gets absorbed more. But yes, it can cause nausea and other side effects if you're taking it on an empty stomach. So um, again, uh, to uh, as far as supplementation goes, they're only adjuncts. You always have to get to the root cause. You've got to change how you live, how you think, what you drink, how you uh, eat, who you associate with. All of those factor into how much energy you will have. Mm -hmm. um, There's no quick fixes here. <laughs> Look <Whatever>. elsewhere. <laughs> like anything, <laughs> anything that's lasting. Uh, you want it once you have a symptom you want it to be gone when you intervene and not come back again and again this is not like um, the traditional medicine where you take a supplement if I don't take that supplement I have fatigue then you we, we have a problem there mm -hmm. okay and um, what is our food for medicine as we wrap up today since we're already talking about well, two things actually but since we're talking about B12 um, one note to make too about it is B12 is found predominantly in meat so we do have a lot of uh, vegans, vegetarians, mm -hmm. or more strict vegetarians, I guess, um, who aren't supplementing, and that can cause a prob problem. And it's not going to happen immediately, but yeah. over the years, you start to lose energy, you're not feeling great, and you feel like you're eating really well, but you're just missing a couple of nutrients there, and that's really important to have somebody who understands what your diet looks like and what your needs are based on that. Um, and then, yeah, you do need to supplement at that point. Um, I know there's, you know, B, there's saying there's B12 and like seaweed and algaes and things like that and chlorella and spirulina but um, I guess the jury's kind of out on it depends on what you're looking at it can be B12 but it's not the active form of it um, and your body yeah, can't actually use it and it can actually be fighting against any good B12 that you have so in those cases you do need to be supplementing if you're especially if you're low on energy um, so the vegan community most people know that but some people don't so yeah and also, um, as far as the um, the B, B12 goes, never take only B12. You want to take it with folate and the other vitamins because all the B vitamins work together it, and taking just B12 without the folate also causes problem or taking only folate. 
and I really highly recommend checking these levels at least once a year or if you've had a period of stress to see what you need so some of these you may need a little more often the others you can just um, not as often so once you're optimized three or four times a week at least you should be taking a, a reasonable amount of supplements uh, unfortunately, our lives are pretty stressful, so we do need supplementation. I wish I could say just eat a balanced meal and you don't need anything. I have not seen that happen very often. Um, I think people who exercise on a regular basis also need supplementation. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything else that we have? Yeah, and the other one too is caffeine that always goes hand in hand with energy. Some of us, you know, are used to always. <laughs> uh, yeah. Using caffeine to have energy, and when you take the caffeine out, you don't. But we actually take caffeine out on our detox and I would say 99% of people have an increase of energy once they've actually gotten their nutrition to a good place and they have that caffeine out and one way too with caffeine is it actually interferes with your sleep cycle mm -hmm. so that can is really a really huge contributing factor to fatigue obviously um, so if you are taking out caffeine and you want to kind of play around with that definitely do in a step by session don't do it all at once because you might come in back and murder us <laughs> so, so in, the, in other words caffeine can cause fatigue as mm -hmm. opposed to caffeine causing an energy burst yeah, and no I think that's there. yeah it, I think that's extremely an important and a very valid point I find uh, people who uh, depend on that five hour energy oh, yeah. drink and Red Bull they have a lot of fatigue. It's almost they cannot survive without the external source of energy. So it's extremely important to um, understand that if you are dependent on caffeine, you have fatigue. Mm -hmm. That is a symptom of fatigue that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So. And so as you're tapering off the caffeine, well, one really good habit to get into in the morning, especially is starting off with a big glass of water, um, doing lemon, apple cider vinegar, and it really helps to rehydrate your cells and give you some of that energy, as well as ginger and turmeric, like making a little drink with ginger, turmeric, lemon, mm -hmm. apple cider vinegar, if you're doing it in a smoothie or just with water, um, figure out a way to get in first thing in the morning, and that will help you kind of wean off the caffeine and actually give you nutrition and get your cells the things that they need right. throughout the day. Right. Um, and I think uh, the, the morning routine is important. Um, even starting your morning with maybe just a whole fruit is fine too. Um, I would say after the water do a fruit and do the coffee only for the taste of it if you want to do it at some point. But the fact that you know you cannot think before you go to the coffee pot might be a problem. That, that is something that definitely needs to be addressed. That means your cells are not producing enough energy. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so your today's nutrition was pretty much staying uh, hydrated. <laughs> staying hydrated, and um, eliminate caffeine, and try to eat. Uh, particularly if you are in a very plant strong or plant based diet, make sure you have the vitamin B. And uh, B12 shots actually do a much better job in terms of overcoming fatigue rather than just the B12 pills. So once again, thank you guys. For those of you who joined us, please share this video with um, who, uh, whomever you think would benefit from it. And of course, spread the word about uh, the practice being um, uh, one of the, that understands both the science of the disease and the art of healing, because that's what we love to do. We'd love to create a community of um, people who are interested in being um, healthy and seek wellness and, or kind of invest in their health. So thank you once again for joining us. We'll see you next week.